Hey folks, Will Brink here, www.brinkzone.com. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about research, or understanding some of the finer points of research. And uh, a study has just come out that I think is um, a perfect example of, of what people need to look at. And even if you're not uh, a scientist or have a strong science background, you can still kind of pick out the important points and at the very least understand what studies are about, what you should be looking for. And I'm actually going to use a, a study that just came out that will be making the rounds and a, uh, which I actually have right here in my hand printed out. Um, it's a study that basically examined uh, a popular NO pre-workout and post-workout formula and found that uh, the product had a positive effect. Now, that's just sort of the, the basic bottom line. That's what you're going to see, you know, online and people discussing it and, and all that. So what's the, what's the issue that's going to help you understand how this works? The product basically took uh, two groups, untrained men, gave one group the product, the other group got additional carbohydrates uh, as placebo, and at the end of the study, which ran 29 days, the group getting the product, the NO pre-workout, post-workout product, did have increases in lean body mass and strength. And if you read the abstract, you know, basically that's what it concludes. And you'd say, okay, great, I mean, the stuff works. I'm, you know, here's a study to prove it. Well, that's where research can be, um, I don't want to say iffy, but that's where research, of course, uh, it has to be left to people to actually understand how to read research how to interpret research and then conclude something from it. Now, a lot of times what you're going to find in the abstract, which is just that little paragraph under the heading of the study, which you're going to normally gets posted on the web forums and stuff, is not what you find in the study. I know that that sounds sort of uh, counterintuitive, but a lot of times what can be in that abstract sometimes either is not what you find in the, the actual body of the study, that is the the full right above the study. Sometimes the abstract is perfectly, uh, it's perfectly true to what's in the study. It just omits certain amounts of information. That is, the, the abstract is, is maybe presented in a way that makes the results look uh, the most impressive. You know, that is the job sort of of the researcher, uh, or, or maybe not the job, but you know, the intent of the researcher as a rule of researchers uh, is you know you want to write up a study that, that you've been involved in uh, to its best light and there's no there's no fibbing there's no you know making anything up at least not in this case certainly it's just you from the abstract you're not getting the full picture and that's why a lot of times you're going to see any scientist worth of salt or anybody knows anything about science is going to say hey I didn't read the full paper and I really can't comment till I read the full paper well I think this is a very good example of that and I want to kind of give you an idea so okay so the two groups, one getting the pre-workout NO post formula, actually there were two formulas, one getting the carbs. At the, if you go into the actual study and you look at the results, well the lean body mass increase, that is the amount of you know, actual muscle mass increased, um, was uh, about two kilograms, a little maybe give or take, which is about five pounds. Now that doesn't tell you that the, the NO component of such a formula had any effect. One of the reasons is it's another one of these uh, a proprietary blend type formulas has a lot of ingredients in it, and one of those ingredients is creatine. Well, those results are almost identical to what you would get with, or, or identical that you'd expect to get uh, with creatine. And had this study done a, a product plus creatine group plus placebo, I would bet money that you would have found that uh, the creatine group would have been identical or statistically equivalent or maybe even superior. And that's sort of the rub in studies like this. I mean, understand that, you know, sometimes there's, there's studies that are not worth the paper they're printed on. But sometimes a study is perfectly well done, perfectly valid, and this is such a study. It's a perfectly well done study. You can't, uh, a lot of times, again, people are going to blame the researchers. You can't blame the researchers for such a thing. It's not their job to be the arbiters of, of the overall truth of, truth of the supplement industry. Their job was basically a funded study to compare a product to a placebo and see what the effects are and write it up. And that they did, and they can't be blamed for that. Uh, you know, that's their job. Um, now, a, a company, again, it's, 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 it's hard to blame the company. And, and this is not just supplement industry either, because again, people say the supplement industry is this, and 
supplement industry is crooked, whatever, whatever. This is just how research works. If you're a pharmaceutical company, you are all, you know, a mega pharmaceutical company, you too are going to set up your studies to make your product look in its best light. It's not your interest to set up a study to actively look for a, a, a way to justify that maybe the product is, is not all that it's claiming to be or that there's something else out there that works just as well that's less expensive and so on and so forth. That's not your intent. That's why, again, multiple studies need to be done by various groups. That's why you're always going to see a study, one study come out and someone will say, rightly so, well, we need to see this uh, corroborated. We need to see the study repeated by somebody else and so on and so forth. That's how research works. The problem is the general public and the media gets a hold of a study, don't know what they're reading, go full hog on it, and then are disappointed or blame researchers or blame you know, somebody else down the line when multiple studies show it's not true or the effect was not as strong as they thought or they compared this formula to something else and got the same result and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to do is teach you guys how research really works, how to look at it, and when you see this particular study floating around, and I think it's going to be all over the boards and whatever, keep that in mind, that the study was a legit study, the researchers did what they were supposed to do, but the abstract is maybe, in my view, um, best case scenario, the way it's written up, the real details have to be found in the study, and the fact of the matter is, I think the effects uh, would be the same as you went and bought yourself some good old creatine, but that's just my opinion, and you can use the product if you want. If you're happy with it, it's all good to me. I'm just trying to uh, help uh, edumacate you, as uh, Homer would say, and I hope this info helps, and I'll see you all on the break zone. If you like this, please hit the Twitter and the likes and all that. Help a brother out. Now, for more information on this topic, head on over to www.brinkzone.com, where you'll find my blog, more videos for reports on fat loss, muscle building supplementation, fitness, health, and longevity, as well as a ton of articles in my free weekly fitness newsletter. And I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.